Hi guys, I'm back. Happy Saturday. You made it through the week. It's over. We can relax now. We can breathe finally. I wanted to come to you today because I have a couple things going on tomorrow, so I didn't want to miss out on you, but I wasn't going to be able to tape anything tomorrow, so I went ahead and grabbed... Well, already hey, you already know I had my stuff ready for today, so I decided to go ahead and film today. Um, we have an interesting lineup today. Um, we're, I'm doing something kind of similar to last time, where one of these is actually not a goza, um, which is, it's actually not even a beer, actually, so that's something that's quite surprising. I didn't quite notice that at first, but it's a nice surprise, so we can add that to our repertoire of things that we have tried together. So, I guess we shall get started. Okay. So, y'all know the... We've had about two videos now. We tried Urban Artifacts, Dill Pickle Goza. Didn't go that well. Okay? I'm sorry, Urban Artifacts. It just... It did not float my boat. And that's okay. But, today, we are going on a redemption tour. <laughs> <laughs> we have Urban Artifacts Gyroscope, if you can see that. It's a Raspberry Midwest Fruit Tart, which is a Gosa. Um, it is 7.5% alcohol by volume. It has a little X, some tick marks and X's on here. I don't know if you can possibly see that, but it's leaning towards the more sour side of things. Um, it says on the can to drink fresh. The Midwest Fruit Tort has 2,600 pounds of raspberries and 30 grams of vanilla beans per 30 BBL batch. Real fruit is heavy. Gently turn in over in before opening and serving. Now, as y'all already know, as I told y'all before, our Urban Artifact is out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, this is actually also, like the Dill Pickle goes uh, on tap right now. Um, you can get a 4-ounce draft for $3 or a 12-ounce draft for $7. So, let's give it a go, y'all. I'm sorry about the Dill Pickle review. I just, I just can't do it. But I'm sure this will be good, so... Oh, wow. Do y'all see this color? This is like pink. This is basically... <laughs> I don't know how well y'all can see that with the light, but it's pretty much a dark pink. Um, really, really like a ruby color. Um, it's very pink. Um, I guess it's a raspberry. That's what you're going to get. So let's have a taste. I really like that. I get the raspberry. It's very tart. Not sweet, though, which I like. This is really good. Definitely a redemption from the Dill Pickle Girls, I must say. Um, it has a lot of character. Um, I feel like if I were to be blindfolded and had to taste a series of Gozas, I'd probably be able to pick this out pretty easy. It's very distinct. Um, especially the color. I mean, it's pretty much like ruby red. Like... It's very pink. But yeah, this is really good. They did a good job with this. Okay. So that was Urban Artifact Gyroscope. Wow, they really did it with the 2,600 pounds of raspberries. So... Moving forward, this is the one that I was telling you is not actually a craft beer. 
Now, with dating, I'm not going crazy. I'm not losing my mind. I did go a little haywire with it, but it intrigued me so much. I had to try it and pick it up and see what it was about. Um, this is actually a hard cider. It's actually Blake's hard cider. Um, it's called El Chavo. This is with habanero pepper, mango, and apples. This is 6.5% alcohol per volume. So this is, it says, <laughs> hard cider for easy living. We like spicing things up. That's why we put dimmers on the lights in our cider house. And it's why we created the sweet heat blended of habanero pepper, mango, and our famous Blake, Blake's apples. So this ought to be interesting. I've never had any type of like beer or cider that has habanero in it. I do like heat. I'm not sure, quite sure about the habanero though. This might end up badly, but we try to be adventurous on this channel. So <laughs> we shall see how it goes. I have my glasses ready y'all. Y'all caught me last time on the first video about that. So well, let's see. Does it smell like it's gonna take a layer of skin off my tongue? Mostly getting the mango. As you can see, it's pretty clear. I mean, I don't know too much about ciders, but I mean, they, I'm pretty sure most of them look the same for the most part. Now, for the habanero portion, um, let's dive in. That's interesting. It's like the spice hits you kind of like after the mango has passed. It's like you get, so you get sweet first and then you get spicy. When I say spicy though, I mean like kind of I don't know, I guess the more you drink it, the more it creeps up on you. There is spice there, but it's not overwhelming spice. It's not a pleasant spice. It's just something that's kind of surprising. Interesting combination. It's very interesting cider. I would, who would think to put a habanero and mango together in a cider? That's certainly interesting. I like the fact that the habanero kind of creeps up on you. It doesn't hit you first off. It's just the mango at first, and then the habanero kind of sneaks in at the end. Again, this is a cider, not a craft beer. I know I just wanted to try it because it looked so interesting to me, so that's why it's featured today. I probably won't be doing too many other ciders in the future. This one just so happened to caught my eye, so I wanted to grab that. Um, I cannot remember if, I believe El Chavo, El Chavo came from Craft Brood on 8th Avenue South. So you can grab El Chavo, the habanero mango cider on Craft Brood at 8th Avenue South. Um, Urban Artifact Gyroscope. Um, this one came from Madison Beverage Warehouse, and I can give you the information again for those two locations as well, so you can figure out if you want to taste them and buy them. So last but not least, and I for, for, forgive me, Jennifer, I know you're watching, so I'm going to leave the camera for a couple seconds. You can yell at me about it later, but I need a bottle opener for this. So, I have another Wicked Weed surprise for all of you. Um, I had such a good response in regards to the first Wicked Weed guest that we had um, on our channel that I decided to do another one. Um, this one was pretty, it stuck out to me um, 
the most when I was looking. Um, I got this from Madison Beverage Warehouse. Um, again, y'all know Wicked Me is out of Asheville, North Carolina. Um, this particular one today that we have is called Silencio. You actually cannot see that from the front of the bottle, but I believe it does say it on the side. I don't know. I have trouble with camera angles, as y'all can see. But it is called Silencio. Um, this is available at Wicked Weeds Funkatorium. Um, it is a bourbon barrel aged black sour ale fermented with coffee and vanilla. So this may fall on the same threshold as what was the Four Hands Brewing Company uh, first impressions. That's what I'm guessing this is what this is going to be like. Um, it says, Silencio is a black sour ale, artfully aged in Kentucky bourbon barrels. The addition of fresh Ugandan vanilla beans and select specialty coffees from local mountain air roasting culminates in a balanced, complex, and elevated sour ale. This is 7.6 alcohol per volume. This is actually one pint. This also was expensive. This is <laughs> like $15, same as the um, Terra Marita, um, $15 per pint. Check out the bottle top, though. Isn't that cool? Like, just, they put so much into the design of these bottles. Like, I just want to give y'all a close-up real quick of the bottle. And y'all get to see, like, the little details. But, yeah, they put a lot of time in the design of these bottles. I guess they should. I mean, they have a special product. What they, what I've been told is the reason why the the price is the way it is is because they do a lot of small batch original ingredients. So that's why the price tends to be higher. Um, like the other Wicked Weed product that we had, um, like Terra Marita, this also does have a cork in the top, so you will need a wine opener to get this open all the way. I'm looking forward to see what this is like. I was supposed to report back to my Madison Beverage Warehouse buddy about how this is going to go. So hopefully it turns out well and we are going to just get this open. I'm very excited about this one. I've never had a coffee sour ale, so um, I'm interested to see what that actually entails. I think coffee and vanilla, it says. All right. I've gotten better at that now. No, I've done it twice. <laughs> so, off top, it just tastes like coffee to me. Has a little sourness to it, though. Let's see here. Oh, this is dark. This is new. This almost looks like a stout. This almost looks like a stout beer. <laughs> you see how dark this is? It's like you're drinking a cup of black coffee. Um, this is really dark. Um, we shall see how this ends. Um, but again, this is Silencio. Black sour ale. Let's give it a go. That is an interesting, interesting beer. Like, I would, like, you would typically think that sours, gozas are fruity, tart, and have some component of fruit in the mix or lime. Um, but this actually really tastes like you do get coffee when you taste it, but it's also a sour. If that makes sense, I don't know. You'd have to just taste it yourself to get the experience, but I 
but it's like I'm tasting like a tart coffee. It's very coffee flavored. Um, I'm not getting too much of the vanilla, but it is definitely a sour ale. Like, wow, um, that's a it, that's an interesting combination. I'm not knocking it. Like, it's good. Just an unexpected combination. Um, I would probably give this a five out of five if I'm giving it. I'm I'm starting a random rating system right now. I give this a five out of five. This is really good. It's just such an interesting combination of flavors, um, especially the coffee with the sourness of it. Um, it's definitely interesting. Um, yeah, bourbon barrel aged black sour ale fermented with coffee and vanilla. This is definitely quite a treat. Um, I definitely was not expecting that, but it is really good. If only you could drink this in the morning time without getting in trouble with your boss. I'd feel energized if I drank this before work. <laughs> I'm just kidding, y'all. It's not it's not that powerful coffee, but it is definitely coffee flavor. Anywho, I just wanted to come to y'all with those little gems because I'm not gonna be here on Sunday. Um, I hope you liked what I brought to you today. I hope you go out and try the El Chavo. I'll go back there. Urban Artifact Gyroscope. The El Chavo Hard Cider. And our soon favorite guest, uh, the Wicked Weed. And this is the Silencio. So... Happy tasting. I hope you have, guys have a great weekend. And please go out and try some of these beers. You're missing out. Have a good weekend. Bye.